Expanding into the international markets can be a significant boon for all of the tech companies out there. But why? Why then so many companies get it wrong? If you're wondering if your business is ready to expand internationally and you don't have a clue how to build your expansion strategy, I'm here to help. My name is Pavel Paluch and I have been working on market expansion for European and US startups for more than seven years now. In today's video, I will help you to understand and assess if this is the right moment to go global with your business. I will walk you through methods to access new international markets and outline the advantages of two widely used market approaches. At the end, I will disclose four most common challenges and pitfalls that every business needs to tackle while expanding internationally. I hope you're ready for this and let's dive in. In the very beginning, I would like to equip you with a quick win, something you can think about as we go further with this video. I want to start with a high key and answer straight away the main question. How do you know if your company is ready to expand internationally? Nowadays, modern businesses are built on cloud platforms that can be accessed by and scaled to users all over the world. And it is tempting to assume that you should be a global business right from day one. But while it may be easier than ever to build a global audience, that doesn't necessarily mean your business or product is ready to go global. I know, I know, I, I promised you to give a straight answer and it's coming, but let me build up the case before dropping it. So where should we begin? You could think about starting with excessive metrics, analyzing global data, building models and forecasts, and end up with 12 month work for a team of dozen people and still not get the straight answer. But there is one main indicator that points out if your company should be planning international expansion. Now dig this. When 25% or more of your business is coming already from international markets, it's time to scale outside your home country. Did I just save your business a couple of hundred thousand dollars? Maybe. But this is just the beginning, clear indication that your business should be planning international expansion. So let's dive into more details on what are the ways to create your international strategy, what are the regional nuances, and what you need to be careful about when building internationally. So stick around until the end, and if you enjoyed it so far, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Let's go. You already know if you should or should not go global at this point. The next question that comes up your mind would be, but how should I do it? And there are several different routes to market in new regions. There is the direct method, so setting up a new regional office. For example, Salesforce was founded in 1999 and already in April 2001, it announced its expansion into worldwide marketplace with new regional headquarters in Dublin and Tokyo. And how you would go about expanding into the new region. Again, there is no one-size-fits-all approach. To ignite expansion, companies like Google, Facebook and LinkedIn created small teams from headquarters and sent them to the new regions, tasked with hiring a local team and growth. Essentially, the company created an internal three-person franchise model consisting of a local GM, a social media marketer to drum up consumer demand, and a person that drives all the operations. From there, each operation added resources as necessary. The second method is through acquisition. Acquire, or you can put it differently, buy a business in the region to put your feet on the ground. Workday is a good example here. It acquired Cape Clear in 2008 to create its EMEA headquarters, or more recently, less known expansion of Aspire Systems that acquired a Dutch company called Coyello in 2018 to be closer to its European operations. Third method would involve a reseller partnership. Joining with a trusted partner to bring your business to market in the new region. In certain regions like the Nordics, Latin America and Japan, companies really prefer to have a relationship with local software companies rather than the international ones. The fourth way is to keep it remote. Keep your team in your home region, but expand sales and marketing activity to target those new regions. There are many ways to roll this out, but one approach is to hire for different specialists in different regions. For example, having your customer success team in US or your engineering team in Europe, having a specific business functions in a specific geographies, 
help you to overcome the challenges associated with localizing salaries and avoid pay disparity between your team members. Whatever route to market you will choose, when it comes to expanding internationally, there are two main approaches that we see companies usually take. If you're in a fairly disparate region where markets vary greatly between countries, for example, Asia or Latin America, then companies expand within their own region as the first stage of going global. Alternatively, if your home region is quite cohesive with less variation within the region, the example would be North America, then companies will look further afield and make the leap into new global regions when expanding internationally. Simple as that. Let's zoom in on the first approach. There are several practical advantages to expanding within your home region first before jumping into new global regions. Time zones. Broadly speaking, there is likely to be less variance in the time zones within a region than if you jumped straight to the expanding worldwide. If this is your first step in expanding internationally, doing so closer to home may be easier to manage from a logistical day-to-day -day working standpoint than making a bigger leap overseas. Trust me, working cross-regionally with time differences spanning from 6 up to 12 hours can be hard to make swift decisions and most likely you will not avoid misalignments. Cultural alignment. If you're in a more cohesive region, geographical proximity may help you build cultural alignment within the new market and with your new international team. It is much easier from the product standpoint as most likely it will not require additional customizations related with cultural differences. Local laws and regulations. You may already have a good understanding of the local laws and regulations that will affect the day-to-day -day running of your business. Compared with if you are expanding into a completely new region with GDPR, Rodo and Popia being only just three examples of privacy legislations in different regions, and there are much more pitfalls than you need to be aware when going global. Price sensitivity. In the recent SaaS Commerce report, Paddle revealed that 27% of companies found that determining the right pricing or plans to be the most difficult aspect of expanding internationally. You may find there is less variance in price sensitivity between countries in the same region than from one region to another. So you need to take into consideration regional features like population wealth and align it with the cost of goods and access to the internet. By defining purchasing power and stacking it against the service or product need, you just scratch the surface of defining the right pricing strategy. If expanding in region offers practical advantages, going global and expanding into new regions offer its own advantages. Immediate access to new markets. Expanding into a new global region increases your serviceable addressable market. The portion of your total addressable market that you can actually reach with your product or service. Opportunity to provide global support and service. If expanding in region helps you work without too much disruption due to time zones, expanding internationally gives you an advantage to provide customer support coverage and more hours of a day to support them. Brand and reputation building. Tech and SaaS companies who've expanded internationally are perceived as more mature companies. Expanding internationally is a big investment as well as a big opportunity. So within your home region, the news that you have opened the new offices internationally can offer your reputation a huge boost. When expanding internationally, it's important to consider your localization strategy in four key areas. Those are the pitfalls that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, so you better listen carefully. Language. Expanding into new regions means you need to think about translating your content, product, and communications. Word of advice from a colleague international expansion manager right here. As you begin to expand into countries with moderate to very low English proficiency or whatever your native business language is, you will need to invest in resources that will allow you to communicate with your customers in their native tongue. This includes hiring support staff who can speak the language and making sure that support documentation, marketing materials, emails, invoices, and other communications are available in that new language too. Marketing and sales. You should think about localizing your marketing activities too. As well as translating your website and marketing materials, you also need to think about translating your lead generation activities 
like paid advertising, social media, blog posts, etc. Additionally, new regions may require branching out into new channels. For example, new social media channel, original trade shows and events. You may even need to localize your whole sales process, not just in terms of having feet on the ground in the region, but also aligning your sales approach to the culture and attitudes of the region. Perfect example, what seems like a normal sales pitch in the US may come across as brash and overbearing in Europe, and a European-style sales call may seem uncomfortable and uninspiring across the pond. Pricing. Moving into new international markets also means localizing your pricing. It might be tempting to just look at that at a superficial level, changing from dollars into euros, for example. But true pricing localization means understanding the markets you're selling to and using this information to shape your pricing. Look at how customers in that geography view the software you're selling and how much they're willing to pay for it. Once you have tapped into the country's buying culture, make sure the pricing is pitched correctly and that it's competitive in the region's market. Payment methods. Many times overlooked, but also sometimes neglected. The importance of tapping into local payment method is one of the key success factors when reaching out to international audiences. Lack of commonly used payment methods will affect your performance directly. Imagine a user who loves your product, a genuine power user, but left without a method to pay for your products and services. Very common issue outside the US and a big part of Europe, where people are using methods different from credit cards. Have you heard about the Brazilian Bolero or Polish Pay by Link? How about the love to pay for services at the local POS stores in South Africa? If you hear about them for the first time now from me and you are planning to expand to those regions, please do consider doing a deeper research as the lack of a proper payment method can cripple your expansion plans. There's a lot to consider when expanding internationally, although global traction can happen organically from a very early stage in your company's life, startups must be strategic about scaling into international markets. It's important to remember that your experience of scaling internationally will vary depending on where you're actually starting from. Scaling out from the US, it's not the same as scaling out of Czechia, the former, has a huge market in its own backyard. The later has no choice but to think globally from day one. I really hope you enjoyed this video on international expansion strategy and please share your feedback and if you would like me to dig a bit deeper on certain elements of going global, drop a line in the comment section and I will happily pick it up for the next episodes. And if you haven't already done that, hit the subscribe button now and turn on the notification bell and I will let you know when the next video is up. Thanks for watching and see you next time.